Alright everyone, hail and welcome to this week's episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for taking the time out and watching today's episode. Uh, my name is Jesse and I'm the host here on this channel every Sunday where I upload various uh, content related stuff uh, for Norse heathenry, Norse heathenry related things, whatever that strikes my interest or fancy at the time. Uh, but this week we are continuing on the nine pieces of eight rune discussion series. Uh, we've got five episodes, episodes previously. On this, this is episode six. Um, you're going to see some annotated cards throughout the video of the previous episodes. I definitely encourage you, if you haven't already, to please check out those episodes and uh, give them a thumbs up if you like them. If you're not too keen on them, it's okay. Give it a thumbs down. But either way, I encourage your comments down in the comment section below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you do like what I do and you want to help support the channel, please become a subscriber. And if you don't want to miss anything, you don't have to. Just click the bell notification. And you'll be notified every time I upload new content. Alright, so uh, today is the continuation, as I said, of the nine pieces of eight rune study series. We have nine episodes total to, uh, to go through. This is episode six. And um, today's episode is going to be surrounding the next three runes in our discussion, which are going to be Yuwas, Perthro, and Algis. Alright, so thank you again so much for tuning in and watching. Before we get into the discussion, we will light our incense and candle and uh, get the show on the road. And uh, as we go through and get things prepared guys, let me just reiterate and remind everyone that does watch these videos that um, my, my, my view on things or my interpretation of the runes for this in instance is that okay it is my interpretation and it's my view um, some of the things that I say or may say may not necessarily fit your bill or how you perceive the rooms or what you see the rooms um, but that's okay because we are all learning um, at our own pace or at our own you know you know we're all traveling this road a little bit differently um, so there may be things that I point out that you perhaps hadn't thought of or hadn't considered um, there may be things that I have yet to learn that you would like to maybe point out down in the comments let me know um, but either way, um, this isn't canon, okay? This isn't like, thus saith the heathen Bible or anything like that. There is no one set way. In fact, when it comes to the runes, um, a lot of what we are getting is, um, y y you know, in terms of what the runes mean and their divination purposes or, or how they're used in divination purposes, a lot of that is a bit murky when it comes to the historical side of things because all we know for sure is that there were you know runic alphabets used to speak and write in these ancient languages of course we are going now through the elder fulark set which was used to uh write in proto-germanic um not in old norse old norse was spoken or written i should say using the younger fulark which are slightly different um but the words and the meanings of each rune um can be open up for debate starting with for instance the first rune that we're talking today which is U.S. All right, U.S. looks like this for the folks watching on Facebook who haven't ever seen it before, and then YouTube. Okay, U.S. Um, is the literally the U tree, Y-E-W. Okay, um, and as you can see by its shape of pointing up and pointing down, it's supposed to represent the you know upper and lower, you know the 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 higher elevated and the lower uh, worlds, if you will, meeting in the middle um, and, and it has a very close representation of life and death, the, the, the mysteries of life and death, the cyclic happenings of life and death. Um, it immediately follows in sequence Yera, okay, which is the year, the, you know, the, so the harvest cycle of the year. Um, and so because that it, because that it follows in the Elder Food Ark set, Yuwa's uh, signals kind of a break in the rhythm of things, you know, that, that cyclic rhythm. It, it, can, it can represent things that have uh, reaching another level um, of experience even. Um, it can represent passageways to another realm, okay? So we're, we're, we're talking about things that can reach into the, 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 the sacred realms. Um, I've, I've seen and heard the, the rune Yuwa's uh, used to sort of communicate um, when it comes to uh, divination or uh, Seder type work, it, it, it's definitely a rune that has power um, to communicate with the dead and, and, and those beyond. 
um, can kind of uh, help us recognize the fact that death is yet just a passageway uh, to another reality. It's not the end of something. It is the continuation of something to another level, right? Um, there is no end. There is just this continuation or cyclic event. Um, it's a very deep and powerful rune. Um, and the purpose of this series is to kind of touch lightly upon each rune. Definitely, as I said before, leave your comments down below if you wish to expound or, or go into further anything that I say. But that's kind of the surface scratching of what I see, the representation of uh, U.S., right? Now, the next rune is going to be one of mystery and one of unknown uh, origins, if you will. And it's quite simply because the fact that this rune is Perthro, all right? And... Uh, it, it is literally unknown, okay? There is no letter or word or... There's no word in Proto-Germanic or anything that, that can quite come close to Perthro or anything like that. So um, a lot of scholars, uh, a lot of rune study... You know, people that study runes and stuff over the years have come to it as meaning the uh, rune of, of mystery, rune of fate, closely associated with the Norns. Um, in my workings with the runes, I tend to feel that that's quite accurate. There's a lot of mystery and uh, unknowing, unknowing of things, you know, and, and, or the unmanifest, things that haven't been quite made clear yet, things that are about to happen or things that could happen that uh, just haven't fully made themselves manifest yet. Uh, it also has a little bit of role in, uh, with luck, okay, because the, the, the lot cup, you know, the dice cup, if you were to show Pethro sort of in this way, kind of almost looks like a bottom of a cup, right? Um, casting of lots was a very common practice in ancient times to sort of figure out how things were going to lie, where, where things sort of ended up, you know, so a dice cup or a lot cup, casting of lots. Um, you're kind of just kind of casting it out into the, to the, to the unknown, let, let fate decide, if you will. Um, the difference is, or, or one of the things about that I like to, to, to would like to point out about fate is that you know we have the choice to either you know face our fates um, by you know what is fated for us, what happens to us, what is going to happen to us has maybe already yet been determined. But how we you know sort of play the game along the way, the things that we decide will will ultimately have an impact or a ripple effect on things for the future, right? So we can face our fates by getting the best part of things and, and, and trying to do it, or we can, you know, do something less to sort of like skip that part or, or, or you know, the, what our actions now in the, in the now will definitely have an impact in the future, right? So when I see Perthro come up and when I see it has, you know, manifest itself in a rune draw or casting, there's, there's a moment at that time that there is question, there is uncertainty, there is mystery, um, and there is time to face that and, and recognize the fact that things are very uncertain right now, but that there is definite action that needs to be taken. Um, perhaps action that requires a bit of guard, that our guard should be put up, okay? Uh, which leads us to our uh, final rune of discussion for today, which is one of my favorite runes in the Elder Fulgard set, which is Algis, okay? And as we speak of, you know, uh, facing the unknown and preparing and guarding ourselves against things that we maybe perhaps don't have certainty yet of yet, you know, Algis is a rune that is literally the elk, okay? You look at it, it's almost like el elk antlers, all right? Um, but it is, it is definitely a rune of protection. I, I have, a, from working with Algis, I associate this particular rune with Heimdall, okay, the guardian or the, or the watchman of the gods. You know, he stands ever vigilant, ever watchful, um, and protects uh, Asgard from any attacks, any onslaughts, right? Um, it, 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 it kind of has a very close connection also with recognizing our higher selves. If you, if you were to picture or imagine, you know, somebody standing in an Algi's position. We see this quite often in ritual, uh, in, in various heathen rituals. We will see a Godi uh, standing with their arms outstretched in a, in a, in a way. This is a very common uh, position to take during rituals of various types uh, to, to you know, put yourself in the Algi's position. Um, and it, and it, 
you know, courage in the face of danger, you know what I mean? Being that protective, uh, proactive protective force. There is sometimes your best offense is a good defense, you know. Um, it's not necessarily to go out and charge, but it is to be vigilant and to stay watchful um, and, and be ready to take on what is coming, not to wait for it and then not be prepared, but to be ultimately prepared. Um, it supplies the insight, I feel, to, uh, that is necessary, right, to, to make such judgments and stand vigilant in our service to the gods, in our, in our service to our communities, um, how, how we build our own luck and how we build the luck of our tribes and of our communities. Um, fear is not, you know, facing the fear is, is, is what makes or breaks us. You know, having fear it, it doesn't make us weak by any means, I think that it's it's how we take on the fear that comes with facing certain challenges. And I'll use for me, it's, it's one of my favorite rooms. I have it in my car. I have it um, burned into a piece of wood on uh, the door. And it is definitely something that I work with a lot and, and love to see come up in a rune draw or rune casting. It's one of my favorite rooms. Um, so that pretty much concludes today's discussion. Uh, next few episodes are going to be maybe a little bit less in depth uh, with the runes because I want to try to talk a little bit about some of my, you know, kind of scratch the surface of my own workings of, of how I work with the runes or what I do, how I see the runes work uh, or, or you know, working with the runes, how I see it done best. Um, and so over the next few episodes, I think what we'll be talking about is, yes, the meanings of the runes. I'm also going to try to show you guys a little bit of what I do, how I do it. Not necessarily do a rune casting on camera or whatever, because that's just not really how it works. But just to kind of give you guys a little bit of maybe insight as to how I do it or if I were to do it, what I would be doing. So um, I hope you guys liked today's episode. If you did, again, give it a thumbs up. Share this video around. Invite your heathen friends to subscribe and you as well to the channel if you don't want to miss anything remember to click the bell of notifications and um i hope you guys enjoyed it thank you again so much for watching everybody that is tuned in today watching live on facebook don't go anywhere so i can check all your comments thank you all so much for watching up there on youtube i appreciate everyone's support we're today we're i think we're getting close to 1400 subscribers and that's just absolutely tremendous i really appreciate it so keep those videos shared around let everybody know thank you again Hail, and I'll see you all in next week's video.